Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Panadero podcast. This is going to be a longer podcast. This is a recap from the first hunt of the year. And we have joined to us to jo- joined with us today. <laughs> joined to us. We have the Travis. Travis. No, it's Media Travis Osborne. <laughs> Media right? Travis Osborne is in the house. <laughs> and then we have the Devin Cole. Yeah. Yep. The Devin Cole. The the one and only. And it's not every day that you get to do a hunting recap, which I'm pretty excited about. This is actually very different because I never sit here in this chair. Why? I don't know. You're usually, the guest. You're the man the, of the hour. You are. You're the center of our attention, buddy. So, so yeah, if you guys are just tuning in, um, one episode ago was kind of like a, it was a solo podcast by myself, kind of laying out archery, backcountry, mule deer hunt in the high country in the state of Utah and kind of laying out the expectation, kind of my mindset, flying with gear that I've never flown to a hunt. And I would recommend to go and like listen to that because it kind of like lays it all out. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm here to share the story. I can't wait to hear it personally. <laughs> <laughs> so how, how, sh- how should we start this? Well, actually, hold on. First off, if you're listening to this, Use promo code podcast on the website. You get 10% off your order. Wasn't it like podcast 10? No, it's podcast. Just podcast? Okay. Um, Podcast will get you 10% off. Go on there, get you something for the season. It's that time. Right now. Right this second, it's time. Um, Start filming your hunt today. Now that we got that out of the way. So... I kind of told Devin a little bit. Trav. Yeah, I was going to say, it's completely, he wouldn't tell me squat, man. I think you probably ought to talk about the airport a little. Talk about the airport? Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Getting through security the first time. Mm-hmm. Who you happened to see, which was a little wild. <laughs> a little oh wild. Oh my God, yeah. Yeah, you teased it on the, the story, but. <laughs> so basically. Flying out of Detroit. Oh, I, I got it. I know where I'm going to start. Set, Let's take the a stage, quick yeah. drink. Yep. Get, get it, get, yep, okay. Okay, so like set the stage a little. Yeah, so I'm, um, I went to Mule, um, Mule, I went to Utah two years ago with a really good friend, Casey Carson, and shot a mule deer with a rifle. And the buck was so small, I could have fit the antlers in the back of my jean pocket. <laughs> <laughs> like it was a small deer, but I really enjoyed, um, I really enjoyed the hunt for a lot of reasons, but it was like, it was different than any place I'd ever been. Wanted to go back, had, have done a lot of these like deep backcountry camping, like hunts, but I've never done it with a bow. I don't even know why really. I don't know if it's because the mindset was always like, Hey, I want to make sure I get it done and come up with meat. So why even worry about, cause you're really, that invested. is interesting. Like most of the, I think all, except for this one of the hunts you've been on have been rifle hunts. Well, I've been out there. Like, I think it's because in my mind, I'm like, I'm, you're like really invested financially. Yeah. Highest odds. Like you're putting, t- you know, tons of time into getting out of work and yeah. you're there for a long time. You want to make sure you come home with something because if you don't, it really sucks a lot of times. Um, so anyway, literally drew this same unit, exact same unit. I shot a mule deer in there and the last time we were in there, we didn't like stick to the plan because it was, it was elk season. I met a lot of the elk hunters in the area. They'd seen some deer and they were very forthcoming with information on like, Hey, we've seen these deer on this, this basin, mm. check them out. So we didn't actually go into the area we wanted to. And so ever since that time, I'm like, I want to go back. Devin. What were the dates of the last time you went? Do Great you know? question. Totally different time of year. I think it was um, late October. Late October. Yeah. Okay. And this time you went with a bow. Yep. During the, late August. Yep. Yep. 25th through the 2nd. 25th okay. of August through the 2nd of September. And I did, excuse me, I did a ton of, my, my strategy on this one was to take everything on my on my bag, in my bag, in my pack, every night, drop in camp, going in deep. Specifically, you don't always have to go deep, but specifically this unit, 
the way that it lays out, like you're wasting a lot of time driving up, up and down drainages, going in and out, potential things that can go wrong will happen along these long travel routes in a vehicle. Mm-hmm. So like it makes sense in this unit specifically to go in deep and then move around within. Yeah. So back to what you're, you know, initially like laying it out. So like on, on Saturday, the 24th of August, I went to a wedding with my wife. In Michigan. In Michigan. Congratulations, Kenzie and Tyler. (laughs) (laughs) We get out of that wedding at like 1130. We go and stay with my brother on the west side of Michigan. And our plan was to drive home that night. Go to sleep. Back to southern Michigan. Back to to like two hour drive east. Yeah. Stay at our place get up early on Sunday morning, get on my flight, go to Utah. But we were so exhausted after the wedding, we ended up staying the night at my brother's. Mm-hmm. My baby was at my brother's sleeping. So it would have been like, get there, wake up the baby, drive over. Yeah, the nobody so wants to do that. we quickly pivoted. I was exhausted the next morning because we got home at like 1130. You got to your brother's house at 1130. Yep. And went to bed at like 1230. And I was, brother. you know, you guys know me better than anybody, but. If you want to torture Nate Hicks, you just deprive him of his sleep. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, that is truly, like, torture. Yeah. Nate's a, a pretty uh, pleasant dude until you get him a couple of days without, without I, sleep. I have to have... <laughs> it's not even that you're not pleasant. It's no, just he just like, gets big old baggy bags. I shut down. Eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you're just not worth nothing with no sleep. <laughs> I got to have six or seven hours minimum. Yeah. It's okay. You know what you... Yeah. Like something about in the evening. I mean, it's different when you get on these hunts because it's all adrenaline. But but in the most part, like I gotta I gotta have sleep to be high functioning individual, which is fine. So <laughs> I had a really late night. We get up at wait, so to be able to I hadn't packed all the way. So like Ooh. in order for me to make my flight, which flew out of Detroit Metro at I think it was twelve forty. Which did end up getting delayed. It did end up getting delayed an hour, but yeah, no, that nobody could have foresaw that. Right, right. So so anyway, we had to get up at 4.30 at my brother's. So I slept like oh, four hours. He took a nap. But I had to drive home. So <laughs> we're driving home in the middle of the night. It's dark. Mm. My wife and baby are in the car. And I'm, I'm struggling on that Sunday morning to just get to our house, to get to the gear, to get to the... Like, I still had to like pack my, my bag. Lex couldn't have been that excited about getting up that early. <laughs> no. And chucking the baby in the car <laughs> so that you could leave for a week. I was going to say, baby couldn't have been that excited. Dude, it was crazy. Was he was he giving giving you some hell? He actually slept decently on the way home. All right, but anyway, like yeah. not to marinate in this too long. We got home, and I get everything packed, hug the hug the wife, hug the kid, and I kind of got a little emotional to be honest with you because this is like the first real trip I've been on away from him, away from my boy. Yeah, it's mm. kind of crazy. Um, but I, as soon as I packed everything, I'm realizing like, oh my gosh! Like I zip up my bow case for the first time ever, and I'm like. I definitely need like a TSA approved lock. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like I you have do. to have that. Cause like I could they see. They won't the let little... you through without it. Yeah. So I'm thinking, Oh my God, I got to go. So I end up going to town, grabbing a TSA lock from Meyer. Everything's fine. I'm on my way to the airport. Everything's fine. Sunday is the busiest day of the airport. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Mm-hmm. If, did you know this? Oh yeah. Okay. I didn't. I didn't. Luckily I got there a couple hours early. Like, mm-hmm. Holy cow, I was sweating it. So I got this large bow case. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I got so yeah, let's break that down just a little bit. So I got a I got a bow case and I got a bunch of gear. Anything that I cannot take on a flight is in this bow case. So you think about um I like got knives stent, in there. Stent uh stent. Tent stakes. Yeah. yeah. Can't have that as a carry-on. Um knives. All the knives. All the, um, like the tent poles. Yeah. Um, my pocket knife. Uh, did I ever say that? Nice. Said, nice. Sorry. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Broadheads, arrows, quiver, tripod, um, everything, almost everything it feels, felt what like. What about optics? Did you keep those on the carry-on? Definitely kept the optics on the, on yeah. the carry-on. Like those are the expensive things. But anyway, it's weird. Like Bic lighters, you cannot put a Bic lighter in a checked bag. You have to carry it mm-hmm. on, yeah. which is uh-huh. weird to me. No, That's strange. Sense. Strange. It makes sense. Why can you carry on a lighter with lighter fluid, but you cannot check it? It's a certain like quantity. Just like I think it's, it's also about combustibles under, you can't get to them when they're under the 
the plane. Yeah. Like if that went up in the bottom of the plane, you're everyone's effed. But if it goes off, you know, in your little overhead spot, then you just pull it out and put it out. Yeah. Yeah. Really? I don't know if I like that. So because I have an oversized bag. Yeah. It's not the weight. I didn't know this, but like the guys look, you know, the guy sits there at the, Mm -hmm. he's your checking in. Checking. Yeah. He's like, sir, you're an oversized bag. And I'm like, I'm like, okay, what does that mean? He's like, well, you're going to have to go down to international to check your bag. International. Yeah. Interesting. And I'm to looking at the international line and I'm thinking, oh my gosh. I'm <laughs> starting over. I'm kind of sweating. So I like get down there. The line didn't move for 25 minutes. <laughs> didn't even move. Just yeah. standing there. <laughs> Finally, like the lady's kind of like looking around. Like she could tell like this was a bad situation. She's backing up. And they she's opened like, up a whole nother yeah. section and yeah. all of a sudden we're moving. Yep. Kind of like stress level went down and it was actually like really easy. That Put it on the scale. I was exactly 50.0 pounds. Hmm. So you didn't have to pay extra. You didn't have to pay extra. Oh, lovely. But the bag was oversized. A, a si- exactly. Yeah. But it was crazy because the guy before me, his bag weighed 37.6 pounds. Like it, it to the 10th, right? Yeah. And I'm thinking, I'm, I got to be, like, I kind of met, you know, I got on the scale, picked it up, got off, did the subtraction. And I'm like, I got to be really close to 50 pounds. I was exactly 50.0 pounds. Yeah. So I was like, this is good luck. Yeah. So dropped that thing off. They didn't even look at it. They didn't ask about a bow. They didn't ask about the lock. They didn't ask about anything. Dropped it off, walked away. S- super easy. I was really weird. I was expecting more. That's strange. Yeah, I, I thought mean, you had to declare a weapon. For some reason, like the check piece, like they don't really care what's in it. Oh. It's just like, there it is. Oh. So it got done with that. Now I'm going through security and I was sweating that. Just you and your carry-on. And your carry-on, correct me if I'm wrong, was your frame pack. Frame pack. Packed tight. And it was big. Big. Did it fit in a overhead carrier thing? Barely. On the plane? By itself. You had to jump on it to get it in there? I, I thought that somebody was, like I was sweating it because I'm like, this is pretty big. It was heavy. I was sweating in line. I mean, I... <laughs> so I get into security, take it off. The guy literally looks at me. No lie. He goes, he goes, huh, we'll see. And I'm thinking, Ooh, what is that? Mean? Yeah. Like, wait, what wait, wait, wait. What? He looked TSA at me. Agent. I take it off and he, he's like, put your things in the, you know, computers, phones, shoes, wall, everything's got to be empty out of your pockets. And he's like, he looks at my bag. He points at, he goes, huh, we'll see. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what does that mean? What? We'll see if it even fits through the X-ray machine. Yeah. I, think, I think that's what he was saying. <laughs> yeah. I think he meant like you might be walking that one through. So like it it gets in there. It does. <laughs> it gets they stuck. got it through there? Somehow it went through. Wow. And I'm walking through, you know, they do like the hands up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah spin yeah. around deal. Yeah. Walk through. You're good, sir. Can I pat your back? And I was sweating. So like there was like a lot of moisture in my lower yeah. back. So he like pats my lower back. Like you're good. Okay. Here comes the bag down. Uh-huh. You can see all the contents yeah, on the yeah. screen. And it gets pushed to the side. And I'm thinking, yep. oh, uh-huh. no. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, the guy goes, so who's got the big green bag? And I said, that's me. He goes, anything sharp in here? I said, not that I know of. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, like one of those. He goes, what about a spotting scope? I said, yep, there's a spotting scope in there. He goes, got, got binoculars? I'm like, yep, there's binoculars. I just want to make sure that this uh, spotting scope is actually a spotting scope. And I said, yeah, it's in the left side pocket. You're going to want to undo that, that, that. Dude, dude, you know, pulls it out. It's a nice looking spotting scope. I said, <laughs> thank you. He goes, all right, puts it back and you're good. And I'm like, thank God. Hey, look at that. So that what, was pretty. What do you think he was looking for there? It's just a really, I don't know. It, it looked kind of funky on the, the screen, you know? Yeah, but like, I want to make sure that's a spotting scope. So, but that, that was telling, pretty easy. Like, like, really, looking back, not too shabby, yeah. I had so much more confidence. You're not like bag. the most experienced with tr- with flying either. So I'm sure like you were kind of yeah, like, yeah. I mean, not not entirely. Especially alone with a bunch of stuff. Seemingly, you're not supposed to fly with. <laughs> like right? my jet boil, like all my ascent. That was in your carry on. No, no, no. That that stuff, like you can't take butane carry on or check. So like I didn't have that. I had to buy that. Mm. But like my my jet boil, like very important things to the hunt were in the the check bag. So I was kind of like stressed about losing it. Mm-hmm. Right. Cause I hear that, you know, it happens. Yeah, it does. Oh, a bunch of times I've been through there and they like open it up and it's like the shampoo bottles 0.4 ounces over the limit. Yeah. And they have to throw it away. Yeah. And it's like, are you kidding me? Yeah. You going to buy me another bottle of shampoo? <laughs> <laughs> it was X. <axe>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like the Scotty, the spotting scope is fine, but this shampoo and shoulders that it's not going to cut it. <laughs> but, but like I, the best way I can describe it is every, every item in both bags checked and carry on was like 
essential to my trip. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. very essential. So when I'm walking in, like, I don't know, I just felt like any, if anything goes wrong, it could be bad kind of thing. Like I would probably could have had to, you know, pay to Nothing check you it. can't replace when you get there. That's the way I would have looked at it. Kind of. <laughs> like get your bowl there. And like, if you had to go somewhere and buy something in Utah, you could have done it. Could have. Like Didn't a, want like to. a new tent or but something. But it would have been like extremely expensive. I mean, <laughs> so, so I get um, done with that, the security and I put my bag on and I'm going down the escalator and I take like, you know, I'm, I'm documenting this whole thing. I guess that's worth saying up front. Like I documented this entire thing. I guess not the entire thing. I, I, I kind of got lazy towards the end of it. Yeah. But I was real good about halfway of it. (laughs) Good Good luck, (laughs) Trav. That's good to know. So. (laughs) At least he did it halfway. So, um, I get down the bottom of this escalator and I'm like, man, I just got the security. I was sweating a little, something like that. Just giving a quick update. And I'm taking probably 20 steps and I look up. And I look at this guy and this guy looks at me and we kind of both like squint our eyes and kind of like turn our head to the side. Like, do we know each other? Kind of like one of those things. Yeah. It's Mark Kenyon. (laughs) Freaking Mark Kenyon. Mark Kenyon and I walk right, like of all the places in the world, we were magnetized together at like in the same stride in the Detroit Metro airport. That's wild. And we both stop. He pulls out his AirPod and I pull out my AirPod. I'm like, he's like, Nate Hicks, Painted Arrow? Because I had a shirt on. He goes, Painted Arrow? I said, Mark Kenyon? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> and we, we shook hands <laughs> and we funny. you know we'd message each other i think on um instagram. instagram a little bit you know and i think we asked him to come on a podcast a long time ago and he never got back to us and he goes i think i owe you a podcast i'm like you do <laughs> <laughs> i said he said where, where i said where are you going coming from he goes uh one of his working for wildlife tours they've been doing. Yeah, I think it was Minnesota them. or something, wasn't it? Yeah, something like that, yeah. where they go and they do habitat restoration. And he's like, where are you going? I'm like, I'm going to go try and shoot a mule deer in Utah. He's like, well, good luck. I said, I appreciate it, man. And that was basically it, you know. Yeah. Just quick hey. And that was kind of cool to meet him. Heck yeah, yeah it is. Because I've been yeah. listening to that guy since forever, you know. Yeah. So that was cool. Um, and I thought that that was pretty good luck because like I'm on my way to a deer hunt and here's one of like the guys in the industry that yeah. I kind of always wanted to meet. And there he was. There he was. So that was good. And then uh, get on the flight. And so here's where we kind of get into the hunt here. So I have one last question. So you walk down that that airplane with a bag that's bigger than most people that are getting on that plane. (laughs) So like, what'd that look like? You fit it in that overhead thing all fine? There was one. It up in there. There was one open, completely like open bin. And I just put it in there long ways. Shut it. Yep. Nobody smart, man. Nobody did anything else. But it fit in there fine. Long ways. Really good. Good. All right. Next. So I get on the plane. Pretty, pretty smooth flight because I was exhausted. Like I slept the whole way. Needed. Like I don't think I slept the whole way, but my eyes were closed the entire flight. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Didn't get up once. Um, super smooth ride. Get there in the evening. So the flight ended up getting delayed. I left about three. It's a three and a half, four hour flight but I'm also gaining two hours. So what's the math on that? You get there like an hour and a half after you took off, basically. Something like that. So it's like 4.30. Yeah. yeah. It's 4.30, flying to Salt Lake, get the rental car situation. I got a sweet vehicle, which was, I, I specifically ordered a four four by four um, Jeep Wrangler. They didn't have the Jeep Wrangler. They had the Jeep Gladiator Rubicon Edition, which is the basically the truck version of the Jeep. Mm-hmm. It's pretty sick, dude. It gets cool. The interior feels like you're in like this Hummer yeah. thing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I owned a Jeep for a while. Like straight, they say, hey, you want to void all the coverage? And I'm like, yep, void it all. <laughs> Taking his life into his own hands. And um, and then from there, I jump in there. I put in my trailhead. So this is important to talk about. I had three points. Three points. One, two, and three. One being the best, second, third. And like, I wanted to get to the trailhead of number one. So like mm-hmm. these three points were parking spots. And then I had East scouted a bunch of areas to get up in and, and do the hunt. So I um, put in spot number one, the spot that I wanted to go to. I, it looks the best. It's like a four and a half hour drive. Shoot. Yeah. So I'm like, I thought I plugged that <laughs> in and I thought it was like a lot less. I mean, it's a serious drive. I'm at, I'm, heavy. And I'm thinking, 
<laughs> so it's Long 4 30 i get the car it's about five i can just see maybe hops in the jeep shuts the door punches that bad boy in let's go hunting and it's just like five hour drive and he's just like it's serious it. <laughs> let's go hunting so so yeah land about 4 30 get the rental call about, about five i gotta go get like butane i want to get some like some road snacks like water bottles yeah. jugs of water just like gear stuff so i don't have yeah. to be worried about anything just hunting so i do that ends up being about 5 30 5 45 i'm leaving salt lake i don't end up so i get i get to my unit i'm 17 miles out okay follow me yeah I'm 17 yeah, yeah. miles from my destination but it's like a three-hour journey so like i get to my area quick quick but it's just now it's all mountain roads but now it's all mountain roads and i'm like Oh my God, this is going to be so a long So it took night. you three and a half hours to go 17 miles? Exactly. Was it was it paved? Oh my God, no. Just So like what, what kind of condition roads are we talking about? Were they actually roads or were they like um, trails. overlanding trails? No, these are like jagged rocks sticking out of the earth. Overlanding trails. trails. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. you avoided all coverage. You avoided all coverage. You, you don't need coverage when well, you're doing I knew, th- I knew this. I knew the roads. Yeah. Uh-huh. But I didn't, I don't know. I kind of just like didn't process at all i yeah. guess the way i should have so you're you're crawling along probably what like 25 miles an hour maybe oh two two like i'll show you the videos oh i'm looking forward to the videos like, actually i i took really good video footage of like and i was I'm on picturing i was drive on in pins and, and needles because i don't have he's any literally gear. on pins and needles actually <laughs> no like I, I i i don't have any i don't have a screwdriver i don't have pliers i don't have a ratchet i don't you're have effed. yeah if, if, you, if anything you break down, goes wrong yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, the yeah. only guy. I didn't see anybody my whole journey in. And I got my GPS. I literally just punched the coordinates in the GPS. So my first number one spot, I get all the way to the end of this trail and the GPS, like I don't have signal, but I don't know if you guys have ever done that. Yeah. Like it still takes you there. Yeah, it still takes yeah, yeah, you yeah. there if you load the map ahead of time. Yeah. So I'm feeling but confident But if you lose that, your phone, you're, you're screwed. Yeah. So I get all the way to the end of this trail. It's like you've arrived at your destination and I'm like not even close. And it's the middle of the night. I mean, it's it's dark it's night i hadn't seen anybody wait wait, wait. You, it says you've arrived at your destination you're nor- nowhere close like i'm looking at the pin and he's like it wanted me to walk the rest away but the rest of the walk was like seven miles <laughs> <laughs> and i'm like oh my gosh like days how? worth i felt like i was so prepared and right off the right off the cuff i'm like making errors like i'm like yeah what, what, what was your head doing at this point were you were you starting to were you flustered yeah. yeah it's middle of night right dark yeah like the sun's like down yeah so were you? Were, I can kind of see like that that dusk, and I was seeing animals like on this trail, this two track. Were you flustered though? Like was it was it like oh crap? I'm well, in I was over my deb- head, or was it just kind of like okay, this sucks? No, I was debating like staying the night at this trailhead because I was so exhausted. Yeah, like fair. I was just like tired, and I'm like I didn't want to do I a felt, seven mile hike. I felt like if I would have just stayed there, I'd I'd like given in kind of. Cause I wanted to be like, there's no, I had not scouted anything there. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'd wake up and waste the whole morning. So I basically drove out of there two hours down this drainage all the way back, took the next road. And I'm just following my onyx at this point. I'm just like, I'm no GPS is working because it's, there's no signal. So I'm, I'm following all the way around. It gets to be, you turn around at this point and drove back out in the middle of the night. Oh my gosh. Two miles an hour down the road. <laughs> so go where? To, to the, the next, trailhead the that I wanted point. to be at. Because remember, he said he had three three trailheads. So, so you're going, going you went to, to point number two? No, number one. I still hadn't got there, remember? Because it stopped at the end of this drainage, and there really wasn't a road. I had to walk another so seven miles to get to the, the trailhead to hike up to the area that I wanted to go. So you came in on the wrong road, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so I'm driving out in the middle of the night. I, I'm, I'm like, I feel like... I'm just driving for a long, long time. Yeah. It was in the car car all day. It was freaking exhausting. So I ended up getting, I'm about two, about two hours from my actual parking spot. I'm about two hours from my actual parking spot. At what time? It's got to be 11. About 11 o'clock. And I'm like, I just put it in park. I just put it in park. I literally just put the seat back and I just fell asleep. Like literally just like that. Put it in park, turned it off. Went to sleep and I set my alarm for like early. Got up at four o'clock. I got a whole time lapse of me set because I hadn't even set up my bow. Like I took my sight off my bow. Just chucked your shit in the truck. I got to put my broadheads on. I want to, I want to shoot once. I want to put my gear on. Like I had my, I didn't have my like silk undies on yet. Like I wanted to get everything <laughs> on. Hang yeah. on. Did you get a bow target? No. I was just so, going to shoot in the side of the earth. Nice. Okay. Um, 
in the fuel situation? Did you have like an extra fuel jug? Well, on my way in, I, I, I marked ahead of time, like my last fuel opportunity and I just fueled up. But you didn't keep like an extra jug of fuel in the no. rig. Okay. I wish I would have. I wish I would have. That's a different part of the story. Okay. So anyway, I know this is a long story, but like I just I, to get to the trail, just to get just like night one, I was planning on glassing a little, like I really was in my mind. I'm like, I'm going to see some deer tonight. Hopefully get on them tomorrow. Like I'm, I'm driving in the middle of the night. feel like I'm burning time. And so I didn't want to waste the next morning. And I just got so tired, turned the car off. I get up at four. I'm it's, it's freezing cold. <laughs> It's like frost. Like I put my uh, pack in the back of the truck. So did you? When, my pack is completely frosted over. <laughs> <laughs> did you and wake my up? My fingers are numb, and uh, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. <laughs> did you wake up in the middle of the night at all? Like, holy shit! Yeah, it's I had to cold. start the car like three times. It was so cold. Uh, you had and to I have kept, been slightly. I was miserable. paranoid. No, I mean the whole trip is like that. But I was like paranoid about like the vehicle not starting. Oh yeah. Cause I kept turning it off, turning it off, turning it. I'm like, I don't know this vehicle that well. I've been in it for a handful of hours. Like what if I accidentally leave the car plugged into my phone or it drains, you know what I mean? Could have been tragic. So I'm, I'm getting ready in the morning and a, and a UTV comes by from down the drainage deeper. Yeah. So you get up at four and you finish the drive or you just decide you're going to hike in no, from where you were. I get up at four and I get all my stuff together. Like I got a light on and I'm putting my bow together. I'm but you're my, still not there. Not even close. Okay. So. I'm there getting all my stuff on, right? Like all my gear, taking off like my t-shirt and putting on wool and putting on my undergarments and like getting ready to go into the back country and like get my food situation right. Like everything, it takes about an hour. It takes about an hour and a half, something like that to get everything ready, shoot my bow, find my release. Put, Cause I didn't have my release with my binocular where my, cause everything was separated based on how I had to travel. Does that make sense? Yes. That makes sense. Oh yeah. yeah. We're with you. So it was like, I'm, I'm double, triple checking. Like I'm going to go in for days and days. want to make sure I'm tight. It's starting to warm, like the sky is starting to warm the, the sky a little bit. The sun is starting to warm the sky a little bit. Yeah. And I'm just kind of getting ready. Everything's packed. So I'm starting to drive, finish the drive. Got about an hour and a half. I thought it was going to be two, it was about an hour and a half drive. And um, I passed like a couple of UTVs and- Coming in or going out? Going out. So a lot of these guys, like if you picture it, if, if you- um, So nobody was in there with a normal vehicle, only UTVs and no, there was No, there were some, there were some trucks. Okay. Um, but if, if you're like listening, okay, the best way to describe this, like if you had a piece of paper in front of you and you were just to draw a long line, okay, the long line is the main mountain range. So like we'll call it the Rockies, right? It's actually the Uintas. Uintas. The Uinta mountain range. So it's the, that's the mountain range I'm in. Uh -huh. So that's the main, yep. main, tallest, highest mountain range, east to west. Uh-huh. And then if you draw a bunch of smaller lines perpendicular to that long line, those are the drainages. Yep. So like the main road, if you picture each line being the spine of the drainage, the, yep. the tallest point, mm -hmm. I'm in between lines driving in as far as the trail will let me. Yeah. And then I'm hiking up to the line, which is the highest point of the drainage. Does uh -huh. that, you follow yes. that? I'm a hundred percent with you. So those roads, depending how far they are, anywhere from an hour to two and a half hours in some of the trails, like that's a huge chunk of time you're burning, right? Yeah. Just to get to that point Just to, to get, get out of the to truck. Just to the point to get out of the truck. And I know that during this season, the specifically male mule deer bucks, they, they're they up at subalpine high, high altitude, mm -hmm. 12,000. This time of year. They're at tree line up in the open parks, eating the, eating the, whatever they can find up in those high areas. Cause it's cool. And that's really summer. So I get to this one point finally, and it had a sick river crossing. Oh, I what? took the freaking <laughs> rental through a river crossing and I, <laughs> <laughs> I plunged in too fast. No, no coverage. No coverage. I plunged in too fast. Oh, Cause I gosh. was worried about getting across. I put it in four wheel. But I, I'm worried about getting across. You know how like when you hit hard, like all the water goes up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did the, you think the you motor went under? starts steaming, like oh. steaming heavy? Yeah, that's what happens when you pour water onto something that's extremely hot. But, like I didn't, I didn't know if I had ruined the vehicle. I'm just glad you didn't get like water in the intake or something. You'd been smoked, toast. You would have been yeah. smoked, yeah. And at this point, I didn't really like no, like nobody was out there. I don't know how to explain that any more than I can tell you. <laughs> Got it. Okay, so now we're in a river. I'm in. So after the oh river, I'm like 
10 minutes from my, my destination. I Bro. get there, I reach a trailhead. It's exactly what I wanted. It's like, everything's looking good. I'm like confident I'm here. I get my bow out. I shoot it. I'm right on the money. 25 yards hitting right on. I sh- step back 35 right on. I'm like, okay, confidence. I'm good. It's about 8:45. Okay. Hey, this is it's still AM, right? Yep. 8:45 okay. in the morning. Like right. I got plenty of time to still see, you know, animals moving plenty of time. Uh-huh. Um, so this specific trail, 845 in the morning, 845 AM. So day two, 845 in the morning. And I'm like the initial ascent, like you can see the, the trail. Yeah. It's like this switch back. Yep. And I knew it was going to be hell. I mean, you can see the elevation gain and I'm like, this is going to be gnarly, you know? So I get the trekking poles out, get my bow out, ratchet straps to the back of the bag. And I'm just like going and it was a freaking, it was a doozy right off the cuff. And, um, I get up into, to this high country and it's like, it's so beautiful guys. I mean, it's how long did it take you to get up there? Two and a half hours, probably two hours. Just yeah. so now it's 10 45 and you're up there. It's 10 o'clock, something like that. I'm up there and I get to this basin right off the cuff where I'm trying to get to. And I sit down and all of a sudden I can hear, bah! and, uh, I get my glass out and starting to, you know, just look through the binoculars a little bit, look at this basin. I wanted to look at this basin the whole, like a lot of the time. And all, there's, there's a ton of sheep up there. I mean, at least a thousand head. Wow. So there's somebody grazing up there. Uh, and as I was coming out on the plane, I was listening to a go hunt, the big hunt guys podcast. They, uh, Omar shot a mule deer mm-hmm. in Nevada, his first mule deer buck in velvet with his bow. And a huge piece of the story was he talked to the shepherd up at the, up in the high country. Yeah. Who watches the, the herd. Yeah. The flock. And I'm thinking, man, if I could find, if I could find the guy, I'll, I'm going to talk to him, you know? And I remember thinking like, in all my experience, like game does not like livestock, right? Yeah. Sheep, horses, cattle, like they don't typically like coexist very well because cows are just, they eat everything. They graze yep. everything. So I remember like looking down on the ground and I'm like, there's a ton of deer up here, but it's just all, it's all sheep. So I'm like, anywhere I see sheep tracks, I should probably avoid. So I'm starting to walk around a little bit, kind of get a game plan. Like, where am I going to go? Because this is like, this whole area is off limits now, it feels like. What color are these sheep? Like Black white, and white. Black and white. Yep. Like you could see them well. Oh, they completely covered Cover me the up. Hillside. I was like, <laughs> they had no idea I was there. Like, they just, like, all of a sudden I was in the flock. Doesn't it make you wonder, like, how did they get all the sheep out there? It's incredible, actually. Like, they bring them in on trucks? They graze. They just, I know, but how did they get a thousand head of sheep there? Cowboys get on horses and they push them out there. They bring them in on trailers though, to get to the trailhead and then just hike them in. Yeah. No, they just follow them with horses. They're cowboys. From where? <laughs> <laughs> like, where did these thousand sheep come I from? I have no idea. Do you know what I'm saying? I get what you're saying, but I think that what Nate's saying is that they just, whatever farm they're from, they just graze them out there. Even if it's 25 You're miles. You're out in the middle of nowhere, 13,000 feet up in the air. Like, where did these freaking sheep come from? Cowboys push them in. Bro, it'd be kind of fun to be a cowboy. Not going to lie. hundred percent. Okay. So Bunch of sheep, no deer. So I'm going higher. I'm at, at the top of this basin, I'm like 9, 95, 10, something like that. Yeah. It's beautiful though. Like, you know, if it felt really deery, like it felt gamey, you know what I mean? Yeah. In this basin. Yeah. Gorgeous gorgeous i mean like i felt bad leaving it but i was trying to stick to what you knew like what i kind of know and that was a huge sign to me is like i gotta move on like maybe i maybe i can find this this shepherd guy <laughs> so i found this kind of cool like little offshoot kind of glass in the, the the drainage that i just came from just to kind of look around ate some lunch it's kind of midday now uh-huh. and um basically I end up finding this this guy. No, his way. name is Eladio. 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 Is that an R or? A- I'm rolling my tongue a little bit. But Eladio. He, yeah. All right. Fair. 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 Super cool dude. He didn't speak a lick of English. I fair. didn't speak a lick of Spanish. Fair. And we talked for like a good while, like enough to like. I'm like you know, big buck. Like my hands on my head. Like. <laughs> Have you seen any bucks? He goes, oh, she, he basically confirmed for me, like sheep and mule deer, like don't, they don't coexist. coexist yeah. They don't. So it was kind of like huge. It was a huge data point. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. he confirmed for me, like he kind of pointed to the next, like the next ridge 
He like, really just wanted basin. to get you off his herd. No, he's a super nice guy. <laughs> we were going to have coffee. Like I said, you drink coffee. Like, and um, he, he just had this, I don't know how to explain it to you. Like, I wish you guys could have seen it. We were up in the high country and the, yeah. this guy's, we're five miles back and he's just like living life on the edge of this beautiful basin with all these sheep. He's a shepherd. He's like, Jesus. <laughs> Did he have a hook? <laughs> no, but he had like five horses. <laughs> He had really? a couple so dogs. What? Like he was just like living in this bunch of trees in the middle of this basin. It was so cool. And I was like sitting there talking with him. I just had like this moment of like. Did he have a tent and stuff? Like you yeah. could see where he was living? Oh yeah. Lived in this like little patch of conifers huh. in the middle of the basin. Horses huh. around him grazing and all these sheep. Thousands of sheep. Thousands. Thousands of thousands. Like you glass out in the basin and it's like. A wall of sheep. Little dots yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Incredible. Um, so. He kind of points. He's like, Bucks, next ridge, like over. And so I'm like, yeah, that's where I'm going. So it sounds good. And get up to this area. I find this sick. Um, like he, I think he built it because he's one of the only guys up there. But it's like a little um, natural spring coming out of the side of the, of the mountain. And mm-hmm. he put like rocks together. So it's kind of deep there so you can get water with your yeah. jug. So I'm like, this looks really good. Like this looks like a good spot to sleep. The wind, it was kind of like tucked up against the side of the hill. So like the wind went right over it. And there's a uh-huh. little flat spot. So I put up my tent there and there's a sweet glassy knob about 500 yards up mountain, about 12,000 feet. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, real quick question. Like, are you at all feeling the effects of elevation at this point? In my lungs, but not, I'm not. Like, not in your head. You're not, you're no. not fuzzy at all. No. No, no it's not that. I mean, I don't know. I didn't, I've not gotten affected by that. Like where you read about yeah. Mount Everest and people getting like hallucinating and. First time I ever went out west, I went with Nate to Colorado, and I, I got say, a, I I I had a horrible you. headache. We were at like eleven thousand. This is up in Soap Basin or whatever, and I uh, we were at eleven thousand feet, and I got horrible headache for the first day and a half, and then like I acclimated or something. Yeah, but I've I been, thought I remembered that story. Yeah, I've been back to that same spot again. No headaches. I've been to Wyoming. No headaches. So huh. okay, continue. So let me just look at this. I want to try and find this video. So, Eladio, Eladio, super cool dude. Um, so I finally get to this, to this basin, right? I'm sorry, to this campsite, and there's 500 yards up mountain. Awesome glassing opportunity. I mean, like, I'm I'm now glassing the other drainage. So other ridge. So you're on this hillside. So you, my did you car, have to go down to the bottom and up to the other side? So my car's at a low point, right? My, yeah. my vehicle. Yeah. I climbed up the drainage. Yep. Now I'm on top of the drainage. I'm six miles in. Yeah. And I'm glassing the next. Yes. Uh-huh. I understand. But where did you first so see Eladio? And where did you go from He's there? He's on the top of the first ridge. Okay. Like okay. And so you flat, walk to the other huge side. Huge basins. Huge, vast, open top of the ridge. So like it's it's kind of deceiving the way I'm explaining it because it's not like a peak at the top. Yeah. It's like huge flat top. And then drops again. And then it drops again and goes up. So I'm now glassing the next up. Mm-hmm. So um, I immediately, I went to go glass after set up tent. It's like three o'clock, glassing from three o'clock till eight o'clock at night. Like that's a long glassing session. I At five o'clock, I find a bachelor group of bucks. Like- right now one was small one was like it felt like a 125 130 inch buck and one was like a magnum a big buck like it's hard to say it's hard to say because i'm not a mule deer guy he had he was a four by four and he was mature his coat was a different color than the other deer Mm -hmm. the other deer had red coats this deer had like is gray yeah like he's been around yeah he -hmm. was like it was like you didn't i don't know how to explain you look in the glass and you're like, buck. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just like, like that. Yeah. Couldn't tell you anything about score, but it was just like, oh, big one. Wow. So, and, and like, I'm just blown just like, away. No shit. Yeah, I There's was. a buck right there. I really was. I was like, <laughs> I, I, I felt really accomplished because just like everything to that what point. What it took to get to that point to even see a deer. Yeah. But just like it, I remember getting out of the, I remember getting out of the plane and into the Jeep and out of Walmart and I'm driving to my spot and I finally get to 17 miles out where I tell you I'm like still a long drive away. I'm thinking, how in the frick is this ever going to happen? 
Like, hmm. you know yeah. what I mean? Like so overwhelmed by like, how am I going to get an arrow on a deer? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How is this going to even pan out? Yeah. Like, this is so big. Super, yeah. The country is so big and you're driving through this dark timber. And I mean, I was seeing, I, one thing I did mention, I was seeing tons of, um, the first night I saw like three moose. Ooh. One trophy bull, like a freaking stud, like 40 yards. Got video of him. I'll show you. 40 yards. Dude, those, you do know the facts about. Yeah, you don't want to get near them. Yeah, they're like, they kill more people than or than any other animal in state parks. Yeah. That's crazy. It's crazy. So, I find these deer. I'm like having a moment. And I'm like freaking out like, holy shit, I found some deer. Like in my mind, I'm thinking, I can't believe I found bucks day one, like day two, whatever. Like It's got to be encouraging. It was super encouraging. I'm like, I'm in them. Like I'm in, I'm in the hunt right now. Uh-huh. On day one, I've at least identified them. I can do whatever I want the rest of the week. I've found them. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I'm glassing these deer intently. I got three binoculars. I got my 10 by 42s, the 18 by 56, and I got a spotting scope, 85 uh-huh. millimeter. So I got my 18s out and I'm seeing them. I put the spotter on them. I didn't have like a digiscoping tool for the spotter, which I wish I would have, because that's the only way you could, you couldn't yeah. even see them in the 18s. Um, so I kind of like watching these deer all of a sudden horseback, somebody's on horseback in that drainage, busts out two nice bulls. Bull elk. Bull elk. Two nice bulls. And they run up kind of like, they end up cresting, like crested over into the next drainage. But as they run up the face, they run by this group of deer and these deer run into this patch of timber and I didn't see them the rest of the night. I got really cool footage of this bull elk. Um, did you scope? Did I send you that? It's really cool. Beautiful bull in velvet. They crest, they go over, they're out. And I'm thinking, man, this drainage has got some game in it. Like we're, I'm in them. Like I'm, this is really, really encouraging. Like there's gotta be more deer in here. Didn't see the deer the rest of the night. Okay. This is where the story, this is the, this is where the story completely changes in, um, in its entirety. Cause this is the sun's going down, right? I glass the whole night. Uh-huh. It's dark. Can't see anymore. I go back to camp. I was exhausted. I mean, I don't know how to explain to you how tired I was. I hiked six miles in yeah, from the truck and I had like very little sleep the night before. Super cold. And what did I say to you, Dev? I think I even said it on the podcast before this. I'm like, I got all the best gear. Yeah. Like the one thing I'm not worried about for this trip is the gear. I've got everything I could possibly need. I think it's exactly how you put it. I think it's exactly how I put it. Like you can quote me on that. I'm pretty sure we can go back and hear you say, I am not worried about gear because I got ever got the nicest gear. I got everything I could ever need. I'm gonna I'm gonna make this story even longer. The first ever elk hunt I've ever been on with me and my dad and my brother up in the high country of Colorado, I absolutely did not have the right gear. I had a like my entry level sleeping bag. I had a blow up ultra light, no insulation sleeping pad on the frozen ground. Yeah. Huge. I didn't know. You don't know what you don't know. I didn't yeah. know. I, I literally froze because yeah. you're sleeping on ice uh-huh. with no insulation in the, uh-huh. okay. This was years and years ago. It's 20, it's our value, right? 2016 or 17. That. Yeah. Something like that. Anyways, I invested in a really nice, like I've come a long way since that. It's years and years and years ago. So I got all this gear. We're in the hunting industry. Like we get to see all the cool stuff at the shows, like new, new trekking, you know, got yeah. everything, got yeah. everything you could possibly want. I borrow from you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I borrow like- from you my sleeping apparatus, which is a Nemo. Nemo's the brand. Nemo does a, a collaboration with First, First Light, Light and they have, the, it's called the Spike Tent. Yeah. It's an ultralight, yeah. single man tent. Backpacking tent. Yep. You'd never slept in it. I'd never slept in it. I set it up in the yard, figured out how to put the, tre- you know, trekking pole in there is the, the main structure of the tent. Got in there. I fit. Felt good about it. Like I've, I've, I've done that trip in the exact same three season material type tent. It's cold, but you're fine. No problem. So I literally get in bed. I nuzzle. Like I'm like so tired. <laughs> I'm so exhausted. Like, and I get in there, I fall asleep immediately. Done. Lights out. Uh-huh. Said my prayer, did a little devotion, thinking about these bucks on the other side of the ridge. Like, I'm in them. All I got to do is get up and, up and find them. them. Yeah. I might even make a stock in tomorrow. Like, everything's good. 
I wake up an hour later and I'm like ice cold. And I'm like, man, that's, that's crazy. Like I'm only an hour in and it's, you gotta remember it's 75 degrees during the day. Yeah. You're sweating it out. Uh-huh. And then as my, my, this is my knowledge. So my research showed me that it gets down to about 45 degrees at night in that area that I was going to 75 high, 45 low. I had a 50 degree sleeping bag. I'm thinking, okay, if I got wool leggings, my pants, two wool socks, I can put my glassing pad, an extra jacket, whatever in my sleeping bag. I'll be totally fine. Uh-huh. Is that good logic? Seems, seems yeah. to be. So I wake up an hour later and I'm like, dang. So I shove my, shove my jacket <laughs> down. Uh-huh. Yeah. In my, okay. Yeah. Down by my feet. I put my foam glassing pad down by my feet. And I'm like, sit, I hadn't slept for the next hour. Like I'm sitting there wide awake for an hour and I'm listening to like Jake Hofer on a podcast to try and <laughs> lull me to sleep. Shout out Jake. Shout out to Jake. I'm listening to a, he had a great podcast. I need to like get you guys in on it. Cause I was, it's about habitat. Anyway, I'm like, why am I not falling asleep? Like I'm freezing, <laughs> freezing cold. And I turned my light on. Uh huh. So the inside of this tent, like it's it's a tight tent. Yeah, yeah. It's a one person like yeah. it's just a shelter, little shelter. Yeah. Like the the foot box ain't big. No. And you got to imagine like sleeping pad. Yeah. You know, I'm picking up what you're. Okay, so out. I'm like kind of elevated off the ground. I turn the light on and I'm head to toe soaked. I'm like, oh my god, what the like. My breath, the condensation from my breath building up on the inside of the tent no is dripping way. on me and my, my feet are touching the walls of the tent. No freaking so I'm, way. I'm in the middle of the night. Like Your soaked. breath is causing you to be soaked. I'm soaked. The whole inside of the tent's just soaked. I never even in a million years would have thought about that. And I'm like, this doesn't even, like I'm all these things are, you know, I'm yeah. just thinking, I'm like, this doesn't make sense. Why is this happening? Do I need to get out and make a fire? Do I need, go ahead. It's also probably, from what you're telling me, way colder than 45 degrees. Well, it, it it fluctuates, right? So the sun went down immediately. It goes from, I mean, it's quick, like 70, you know, 60 at seven o'clock, maybe 55 at eight o'clock, nine o'clock, like it hits 45. Like it gets colder. That's what I'm saying. The, the lows down. in the evenings were not 45. So it gets worse. So I'm sitting here in this tent and I'm thinking, I'm, I'm actually kind of like in a, a little bit of a pinch Panic. because- yeah, yeah. I'm six miles out here by myself. I do have the, the local shepherd. If I get into some pinch, I could go walk a mile back and find him probably. Like it wouldn't be, maybe not quite a mile. It's probably I didn't think mile. about that when we were talking the other day. Like that's a little tiny bit of a safety blanket. Like that's, that's a, that was God actually. Yeah. It might've been Jesus. He's, you know what I mean? Like that's the one person you know that is within 30 miles of you. hundred uh-huh. percent. Yeah. Yeah. But like, I, I'm still like, that would have been the last thing I wanted. Yeah. yeah of do. course. Yeah. But like, but if it were like, I'm dying. I wasn't close to dying by any means, but like I was, it was not a good situation at all. No, it doesn't sound like What do you it. expect the low actually was in the twenties? It Well, so as the night went on, I kind of like was da- dazing in and out of sleep. Like, I don't know how, cause I was so cold, but like I was trying not to get like my inner material, like my pants and things like that wet. Cause that uh-huh. would have been bad. Like, yeah. Very, very bad. It was yeah. already bad, buddy. So what was your question? I'm sorry. How low do you think it really got? Because yeah. your research told you 45 and it definitely wasn't. So it got down in the 30s for sure because that in the middle of the night, all that water became ice and it was like sliding down the side of the tent. Yo. Okay. And you're in a 50 degree bag. I'm in a 50 degree bag. And you purposely what didn't What clothes did you have? So I, I literally took the, I had my wool leggings. Yeah. But like which one? 250. The 250 mid-rates. Merino. Okay. Zip up down the side. Yeah. Yeah. Really recommend them. Yeah. I had a pair of pants on. Which ones? I think they were the... Not the Catalysts. No. It's your light ones. My light ones. The green Merino ones? No, not those ones. They were the... I think the the guide. Oh, that's city, paper. That's paper mache. Guide. Yeah, exactly. Okay. That, and then I was in the sleeping bag. Oh my God. Okay. And what did you have for shirts? I had a t-shirt. <laughs> I had a... Um, did you bring other clothes? The Wick hoodie. And then I oh, had my a sweatshirt. What? So the two heck? layers of wool and a sweatshirt. Plenty. Yeah. Plenty for 45 degrees. Plenty in a sleeping bag. But it wasn't 45 degrees. Nope. 
I feel like next time, emergency puffy pants, the cold, emergency puffy The cold puffy wasn't coat. the issue, though. I want to be very clear. The cold wasn't the issue. It kind of sounds wet. like it was. It was the, the wet. wetness. Yeah. Uh, I think they were both equal issues. The, the issue was that- I think without being wet- sucks. No, no, no. I think even without being wet, you would have froze your ass off. I don't With what so. you just said, you a 50 degree bag and wick? No, I don't think so. Okay. I, I would almost guarantee you would have still been cold. I, I looking back, I wish I would have taken the. I have zero a degree. really nice down zero degree bag, a Kelty bag. Yeah, I remember you saying, you're like, ah, when we were doing our breakdown, you're like, I do have a zero degree, but I'm not going to need it out there, so I'm not taking it. I don't know why I completely <laughs> misjudged it. I feel kind of dumb about it. So, anyways, that was literally sleepless night, like actually. Night two, I listened night to two three. podcast all night long and I only had a handful of them downloaded. So I think I listened to a Cam Haynes one, two Jake Hofers. I listened to a fall and I listened to a, um, uh, what was the other one? Oh, it was a meteor. I was in him. I, I was in them in my mind. Like I was hunting them in my mind. So I wake up as soon as the sky warmed up with any light, I was out of there and like trying to warm up. Was there any part of you during the night that was like, I'm going to go make a fire. Very, very close to. But the problem is there wasn't any wood around. I'm in the middle of this basin. Like, I had to, like, travel a long ways to get any wood. Like, it's weird. Huh. Like, I'd had to go on down mountain. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Like, sketch in the middle of the day. I feel like, like you'd want to be moving, though. I, I, I thought about getting up and moving. I really did. I thought about going back to the truck. I really did. I was like, I'm going to walk back to the truck. I'm like, that's six miles. Like, who's going to do that? <laughs> I wasn't close to dying, but I was extremely uncomfortable. And I'm in the mind, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking this really sucks because I have no confidence in my gear now. And I don't, I can't do the style of hunting that I want to do because I was trying to like get to the deer, sleep, do the next thing, get into position, sleep, and then hunt them, so, you know? So question, yeah. what would be the, the, the fix for that issue? Like, cause you're going to breathe inside your tent, regardless of what the tent is. Well, so I tried sleeping outside of the vestibule like i tried to like sleep on the ground yeah and i just didn't have the right setup to do like, that like sleep out yeah like i probably could have done that but all my shit was like covered in frost yeah so it's like you kind of are soaking yourself that way too yeah definitely didn't have the right sleeping bag for that i tried it i did i opened the vestibule and stuck halfway out and i was like testing it and it just it wasn't it so like but what is uh, what is the correct way to what's the correct way to use this the spike tent like what do they want you to do take a pair of scissors cut it make it a sail for your your sailboat because it ain't (laughs) we should should find out though to his point like they don't just make a tent and charge a whole bunch of money that you can't use yeah there's got to be a correct you know like what did what what don't breathe i don't i don't know (laughs) that's what i'm saying would it be would it be fine if you were not in such cold temperature i guarantee it's probably the case just the the condensation from the temperature. I've slept change. in three season tents before, but maybe I'm just it's not the touching close the close quarters thing. Yeah, it's yeah. your breast like right here. I mean, when lot, you and I were in that three season tent in Colorado, we were sharing it, and I remember frost being all over that tent, but it's just bigger. Yeah, you just got more room. So the the sky warms up. I get out. I go back up to this glassing point. and I got video of all this. Like I look like hell. <laughs> <laughs> but epic sunrise. Coffee. Didn't have coffee. Not, not right off. Because it was like first light and I wanted to see these these bucks again. Found them immediately. Shut up. Found them immediately. And I'm like, I, I had like warmth immediately. I was warm again. You know what I mean? Like the confidence in, you had lost in your gear, you regained with I'm the like, fact I'm that you found these deer. I'm in the game. Deer. Like I'm in the game. <laughs> this time there was five deer. One was a doe. One was, there's two small bucks. And it was for sure the same bucks. 100% because of the coats. I could tell because of the color of the coat. One was a doe, two were small bucks. I couldn't really tell, like, I couldn't tell if the, the small. Small enough that you would have killed them, or, like, big enough that you would have killed them, though? Like, any of the bucks, bucks that were legal, would you have killed them? They were all bigger than the deer that I'd shot in that unit so, yes. two years prior. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. I wasn't being choosy, but there was one that was, like, framey. I could see him. He was in velvet. He was gray looking. <laughs> he, was, he was definitely the mature deer, and he was, like, leading the pack. Of course. Yeah. Like, moving around on the mountain. And they went into this old chunk of timber. And the, how, how far away is this? Like, uh, great question. Because that's where I'm going next. Okay. Yeah. Um, as the crow flies, uh-huh. it's like 1.6 miles. 
one and a half miles. But then for you to actually get there and go, you'd have to. You said you had to go yeah, down okay. base and, and back up to a your hundred second ridge. Guys right there oh, with you, man. So so here's what happened though. Let me get to that. Yeah yeah yeah. That's yeah, coming. Yeah, sorry. Because I end up making a stock on these things. Good. I want Trav to also think for a second about possibly sleeping in a hammock if you were with him. And oh, this, I would have done it one hundred percent. He 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 might have been okay. I think I would have been fine. I just don't know where the trees are. I think you both would have froze your asses off because you would have packed the same clothing he would have. No, and I was I was planning on packing a lot more than what he just packed. I I, I don't warmer. think I packed the wrong things. I think I packed the wrong specs of the things. Yeah, yeah, no, that makes sense. If I would have taken my zero degree, I'd have been fine. Down, well, you, down was, can take water. Down yeah. can take moisture. It can. T- it can. It could take moisture, but you'd still be soaked on the inside of it, right? I'd have been totally fine in that bag. I truly okay. believe that. Anyway, either way, I would I would still bet on my setup over his setup. So there were no trees though, so, so that, that, that would have that would have really screwed me. So where I'm looking, this 300, uh, it's not 360, but this huge vast view that I'm looking at, these deer are directly across from me. Yep. Okay. And the sun starts to come up a little. As bit. As the crow flies, you're staring at deer 1.8 miles across. It's like 1.6 something, 1.65, 1.66. Okay. I'm right there with you. I've always just said one and a half miles. Yeah. And it's, it, so the sun's coming up, right? Mm-hmm. I'm looking into the sunrise. So I'm looking east. Yeah. As soon as it gets to a certain point, like it crests, crests the ridge, mm-hmm. all of a sudden, like it's like impossible to see. It's yeah. not like, oh, I can't see. Very, it's like this. It's I'm looking into headlights and that side of the mountain where these deer are, it's still not lit up. So yeah. it's a shaded area. Yeah. It's completely impossible. So I, uh-huh. I'm like going up mountain more. I'm like, man, I got some time. Maybe I can get a diagonal view, get a little bit better review, and maybe the sun will be a little higher in the sky by the time that you know that I'm done hiking or whatever. Because I'd glass pretty thoroughly for like an hour and a half, whatever. Uh-huh. Like this is prime time, right? This is where I'm trying to find deer moving on their feet, trying to find them, put them to bed, go over and stalk them. So I go on this long hike. I end up, I end up hiking like five miles, but I go like up mountain. Like to like sheep country. Like I'm like, it's weird because it's deceiving this country. Towards them, away from them. So like, so here, here I'm, I'm here. You're talking about like, like, like. So I go up, I'm going up higher to the main Uintas to look across diagonally at these deer. And as I'm like, it's, it's deceiving because it's, it's not like Colorado where we've been, where you go up and it's all timbered. It's wide open shill. Is there any point though where like you would have wrapped around to like here? Exactly. Okay. Well, like. I mean, you would have had to get up to the spine to do that. It'd have been like a two day journey, at least, at Jeez. least. I mean, <laughs> so what were you trying to do? I was trying to get up angle and the, 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 the bridge with Canyon was so much deeper. Like I could have gone down a whole nother two miles, at least three miles. But, but how are you going to get over here to kill him? I wanted to get the view. Mm. He's just trying to get so the sun wasn't in his sight line. Got it. And, because, and because, and because there's like, I could see lakes. I'll have to show you a video. Let me, okay. let me show you a quick video because it really doesn't make sense when I say it out loud, yeah. but when you're there, it makes what, sense. What it sounds like when you're not there is that you hiked five miles away from the deer <laughs> <laughs> when the sun came up. That's what it sounds like. So I'm just trying to make sure I understand. <laughs> Def says, I am confusion. Okay. So here, here's the glassy knob. You see this? I'm sitting here. Okay. These deer, deer, deer on that face over there. Are deer. they in that little open spot? No, not here. But like this keeps going way over here and this keeps going over here. So I, I just. Wow, you do look like hell. Beautiful country. <laughs> yeah, that's gorgeous. Like Ooh. this is my view. Here we go. So see Ooh. see how it's really long? No yeah. way you're ever getting across that. For you to go from where you are over to those deer. So those deer are way over there. Be a month of Sundays. So to go, I, I went way up to here. Unbelievable. Yeah, you could have wrapped around right there. Dude, it would have taken a it's so much bigger than it looks. Like it's deceiving as hell because like That's you can beautiful see it. Beautiful though. Dude, top notch. I mean top notch. But like you So there's trees in the bottom, but exactly. none were up where you South are. South Shale country. And I was high. I mean at one point I was at thirteen thousand. Hell he was high when he said that. The air's thinner up there. Okay, that I mean that kind of validates a lot of what I was thinking. But you kind of were hiking away from the deer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was. But I wanted to get to this higher point where I could see kind of where these deer, like it made sense because I had the, the glass magnification to do it. Got it. And I wanted to kind of peek. There was all these little tucked in little things. I wanted to see if there's something more killable because that's not real killable. Way over there. 100%. Like, like yeah. I've seen them two days in a row. They're in the exact same spot. It's like, don't, find, don't leave deer to find deer, but like 
exactly. you, you would have blown up the whole trip just to go try to kill that deer. I felt like I was in them and I was kind of sweating. Not like I, I was in the mind, in my mind thinking, I'm not going to probably sleep out here tonight because I can't do that again. Ah, uh, I got it. Okay. Hmm. So I'm like going to do what I can to get something killed today. It's kind of what I was thinking in a weird way, like do or die. Yeah. So I started hiking. I start going up and like, I find this epic view, look over, find these deer. They're bedded right there. Great. You found them again. Oh yeah. Yeah. found them in this patch of timber. Great. There they are. So I start getting curious. I start walking around. I'm up high. I mean, I'm, I'm up in this shale country. Like everything's rocks. I'm walking on rocks. I have so many videos of it. I can show you. And I start like glassing all these areas and I kind of get carried away on my hike. And I'm like, I'm like just walking to walk and I'm burning energy. Yeah. yeah. And it didn't really like register. It didn't, I was having so much fun. Like I really was. So I come back for these deer and I'm, I'm kind of walking and I'm like, okay, I'm going to go after these deer if I can find them again. So I come back to the, the first original glassy spot. I do this huge loop. So your walkabout didn't turn up anything closer to kill. And Correct. you were like, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make a so play at these deer. Find these deer again. Leapable. And I'm like, this is where your question was, Trav. Like, how uh -huh. far are they? How far is my walk? So I'm, I'm like, as the crow flies, it's like 1.6 miles. Uh -huh. It's like deceiving because it's not like you're on a ridge and they're over there. It's like. You're in Michigan and they're in Ohio. Exactly. Like, not really, but like different yeah. zip codes. For it's sure. like for sure not, I'm just going to walk over there and make a stock on these deer. No. It's like, but I, I'm over here I, and the deer are way over there. I want to stress, I want to stress that I, like, I glassed for many, many, many hours that morning. Like, it was like from sunrise till noon. Would you think about it? The sun comes up at like six o'clock. Before you realize, okay, I haven't found up anything. I haven't found yet. anything else, but I found this patch of deer. Like that's where the deer are. Like uh -huh. don't convince yourself otherwise. I tried everything else to find something close because I was high. So I, to your yeah. point, I was trying to like creep to these points and I, I had an arrow knocked and I was like, there might be something right. There could be right over. So I was like slow hunting everywhere. And like this walk, it was just, I was just having a lot of fun doing it. Didn't turn anything up. The deer over there, get back on track, get over, find them. I'm going to make the stock. 1.6 miles. Here I go. 1.6 miles is the crow flies. Is the crow yeah. flies. So, so I you kinda, estimate what? All day I've been sitting looking at this view. So I'm like, I got on my phone. Like I, we're exactly where I think they are. I marked it on my GPS and um, I'm kind of like picking my route, looking around, like looking at the terrain, like what's my you know, what's my best path? It's so like, that's a skill in itself. That right there is what I've learned is looking at the terrain and finding a point in like, like the whole navigation just to get into the game, into zone, into 200 yards is a super, super skill that is only sharpened over time. Like there's yeah. no other way to, to, to get good at that. And so I'm sitting there. So did for you take photos at all? Cause I remember in Wyoming, remember we found those deer in the hillside and we like took a photo. And then when we got over there, we're like trying to compare trees to the photo and see if we were 100%, close. Yeah. hundred percent. Is that your idea? Like just, I did just scoped and screenshot it and did a bunch of stuff. Okay. okay. Like it's pretty obvious though. Like, yeah, yeah. but does it, it's not obvious when you get over there though. Like it never, these ever. These deer are at the tree line. So all they gotta do is go up to go in the trees or come down to go in the trees. No, there's no trees North. So they, they're at the tree line on the top so side. So if they come down into the drainage, they're in deep, dark timber and never going to see them again. Yeah. And they're right at the tree line, right at the tree line. Yep. And there's these two parks, really obvious parks that are like all green slopes opened up on the, on the, they look like avalanche shoots basically. Uh -huh. And they were just to the right of it. It was like really obvious landmarks that I could get over there and identify. I could find it on the map. Like I felt very confident and like navigating to get there. But so I go back down to my camp. Okay. So I marked it. I literally made up my mind. Like I'm doing this. I'm here to kill. Like I'm doing it. I'm going go back down to my camp, 500 yards or so down mountain, put everything that is not essential in a bush in the tent. Like, so sleeping bag, sleeping pad, tent, a bunch of bags of food, um, like spotting scope. I didn't bring a spotting scope, but things heavy. I didn't, I didn't take all the unessential. So I took a bag of food for a day, knives, bag, game bags, like water, right? The essentials, mm -hmm. bare minimum essentials. And I just drop it all and I get my trekking poles out and I start walking down. Okay. 
and it's like steep. I mean, it's steep because I'm like si- like using the side of my boot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah, you yeah, kind of yeah. dig in, trekking Edging. pole. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I'm like, I get in the zone. I'm, I'm hiking, right? I'm just, that's my main goal is to get over there and I'm nowhere close. So I just kind of like go into my zone and I'm hiking and I'm starting to sweat and I'm getting real sweaty and I get down. So like, it was so ambiguous. This is where I was talking about like the skill to read the map, to read what you're looking at. Like it's a deep, nasty, dark drainage. Uh So like I get down and I thought that it was down and basically up. So basically down and up, but it was like a hidden. Oh, farther. Yeah. So it was like you go down, you have to go up a little bit. And then down even deeper and then up. And then come back up. Yeah. D- couldn't see it. Couldn't see it from where I was for whatever reason. It just, it didn't, I couldn't see it any. Yeah. Depth. So I'm going down, I'm sweating. And I look at my, I put a tracker on my, on X. Uh-huh. I thought the whole thing was going to be, I was adding about a half mile. So 1.6 would probably be around two. I was at 1.9. Not Ooh. even to the bottom yet. Not even to the bottom of the first one. Or I was at the bottom of the first one, but like I had to go up and down again and then up. I'm Ooh. like not even halfway. And I'm like two miles already. And I'm thinking, I'm doing the math, like it's one o'clock. I still got another, at least, at least another two miles. I got to find them. I got to get an arrow in it. I got to quarter them and hike back this, this way. Ooh. To all your shit in a and bush. And then another six miles to camp, or I'm sorry, to my truck. <laughs> another six miles to the truck. So I'm thinking, I'm doing all this math. I'm like, this ain't going to happen. How's this going to work? So I kept going, but kind of against my better judgment. And I started making mistakes, like in my hike, like I tripped once, mm-hmm. like almost fell. And then there was this big boulder, like the size of like a small medicine ball. Yeah. Everything's rock. Like yeah. I'm walking on rocks and, you know, kind of jumping around and I crossed a Creek and, and I step on this like small medicine ball size rock and the whole thing rolls. So if you picture like pretend this chair, like I step and the whole thing rolls with me. Yeah. And I end up stepping on the ground and if this rock would have continued to roll down this face like it would have crushed yeah. me like no yeah. doubt and i look up and there's this huge cliff like i got cliffed out basically and like it could have been detrimental it could have been bad yeah could have yeah. gotten hurt yeah yeah, yeah 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 and i remember sitting there thinking like i look up i can see exactly where these deer are i put my glass up i find these deer in my glass like they're like another, at the bottom. You found them. Yeah. Cause there's like huge rocky outcropping, like a drop off cliff. I got cliffed out and I'm like, okay, I'm going to have to go way around. I'm, I'm like, there they are. And so I put my glass up and they're right. Like I see the deer, but I couldn't, I couldn't, I'm sitting there for a long time. And I ca- I cannot convince myself that this is a safe or be worth it. I just, I, I, I just, the amount of effort that I had put in, like, it just didn't seem safe. Like, I was so far out there that I just, I honestly, I, I turned around. I just turned around. And I was so upset with myself the entire way back because it was a hell of a hike. Uh-huh. And I'm like, I'm feeling, I'm feeling like, I'm feeling like that, like that could have been my opportunity. In the back of your head, you're thinking, I'm not sleeping out here tonight. I can't. That's kind of what it's in the back of my mind too. I'm like, I, and I'm running on no sleep. So I'm exhausted. I, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't imagine everything happening and working. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. With my state and situation, I was like, I can't even. I can't even wrap my head around I that. I can't even like yeah. picture it, it happening. And I was like in a negative headspace. I felt like I'd almost hurt myself. And I'm, for whatever reason, in that moment, like when I almost hurt myself, I thought of my kid. I'm like, dude, I'm turning around. Like, this is not worth it. Mm-hmm. And I filmed me talking. I don't even remember what I said, but I, I was really disappointed in turning around. But I, I feel like in that very point, like I would have had so much more confidence. Somebody else would have been there. Mm-hmm. I just would have. Yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> but it's like, dude, it's a, it was a journey just to the bottom. And so like, yeah. I end up going back and I get to the, what he's saying is you guys would not have had the same permission collectively to turn around if you were there. Yeah, I know. Yeah, he wouldn't have granted the permission that he, he granted he, if he had someone with him. He would have thought that you know what if i go down at least someone else is here exactly we're <laughs> going tell my story. we're going damn it <laughs> we would have spent all night out there probably yeah probably but anyway and i would have had trees to put my hammock up yeah in there. there you go plenty of trees <laughs> um tons you of el- tons of elk dude, if your sleeping situation could have been better you would have had everything on your back if that night had gone okay and you still arrived at the same uh 
decision to go after those deer. It would have been a miserable hike down. You would have got cliffed out, but you would have been like, I've got everything in my back. You would have worked out a different plan. Maybe you would have camped in the bottom, put the deer to bed again and gone up after him the next day. Like the, the root cause is, is no confidence in the sleeping situation. Another really big thing too, I didn't mention was I could have like drove around to the next, like gotten out of there, drove around yeah. the next drainage and then drove in and come right up on them. But that drainage, like the, the ORV trail, yeah, it didn't go nearly as far in. So the hike as the crow flies was like eight and a half miles. And Ooh. so I'm thinking you add in what I know now. So yeah. why those deer are there though? Think about it. <sighs> exactly. Nobody can get to them. Nobody can get to them from this side or that side. And, and I'm looking at this country too. The, of course they're right there. So I'm closer in, right? I'm closer in. And I'm looking at these things in the 10 by 42s at this point. I'm like, right, I'm like looking. I didn't, I couldn't see the mature buck, but like I could see a couple of the deer's back. So I'm like, they're in the same. Yeah, they're right there. They're right there. So my plan was I was going to get into one of these parks where they kept feeding in two days in a row. I saw them twice. Like I can get into one of these parks, tuck up in a tree and just wait. Like I'll be in the zone. Yeah. Maybe I can find them in the glass and then, you know, whatever. Like I was in it. I could have been in it, but it was just. It was the country was, I don't know how to explain it. It's just this crazy, like all shale rock. Like, I don't even know how you could silently maneuver that where they were. It's just like at tree line. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just huge country. It's beautiful. But these deer are just, like you said, it makes so much sense why they're there. Yeah. And nobody um, can get to them. Little did I know, not to, not to break the rest of the story, but like little did I know. That was the only male deer I saw the entire trip. Oh man! Yeah. Ooh. So I got out of there. Basically, I got out of that. I hiked up, and uh-huh. my god, it took me forever. I was exhausted. I'd covered that that day all in because I ended up hiking back to the truck and checking out some other things. After you got to the bush, I covered 19 miles that day. Ooh. On my feet with weight. That's 19 miles. Also, no sleep. Well, no sleep, but then uh, mountain miles are a lot different than Dude, the 19 Michigan and miles. And everything know? involved, like I really burnt myself that day. I bet. And yeah. I, I, my, my calves were like super fricked. Like, <laughs> 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 like I, I felt like super I was in, fricked. I was in pretty good shape, but like I got got <laughs> cooked a little. My calves were super fricked. <laughs> I got cooked a little bit. <laughs> so, um, I get out of there, have lunch, get back. I was scouting the whole way back. I kind of took a really roundabout way on this basin because the country was so good looking and got back to the truck and I was spent like 25 cents in a quarter jar. I was spent. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, Never heard that one before. 25 uh, cents in a quarter jar. Dude, I'm telling you, I, spent. I was just drained. But I get back to like, I felt, I don't know how to explain to you where my mind was. I just was so burnt. And I, I felt guilty for leaving that area because, like, you never should leave deer to find deer. But I'm like, I don't know how I can get them killed. I don't. I don't know how I can get them killed in there, like, especially by myself. And I ain't sleeping up up in that little nook of a freeze zone anymore. Like, it was horrible. <laughs> so, so what did you end up doing whole, that next night? Yeah. My whole goal after that was, I want to. It was sucked because I was like kind of married to the vehicle after that. Yeah. So my goal was, I'm gonna drive up and down as many of these drainages because I was seeing tons of mule deer up and down these drives. Yeah. But tons of does. I would see I does say, yeah. and younger, younger fawns like a lot. And I'm thinking maybe I'll get lucky. You know, did it, did it ever cross your brain to, well, I guess what, what was your license for? Was it for just a buck? Just a buck. Okay. So I saw, I, I saw a say, of, I was wondering if you were, I saw ever thought of about moose meat. after that. I did go to a, I, I would, I would still hike up in the mountains. I, yeah. I just didn't go, 10 miles. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'd go like to a glassing point. I'd glass for a long time. And then I would, uh, I would hike up a couple miles and then, you know, come back and just kind of hunt around like these yeah. trailheads, which I didn't, I didn't see a hunter the entire week. Hmm. I didn't see anybody the whole week with a weapon. Hmm. Um, but I did get into some, like I got into some really deery areas um, at one point I was like in this deadfall area, had does like running like right by me. And I, I, I had, I could have killed a doe probably. Yeah. Um, I had signal on that hill and I called my mom and I called you. 
I texted my wife because she was at work. And uh, I was just like, I'm in the middle of nowhere right now. This is really cool what I'm looking at. Wish you could be here. I'm safe. Talk to you later. Um, but that was really, let me look at my photos really quick because I don't think there was anything too like extremely notable after that. Like I saw tons of deer. Yeah. I, I saw was, tons of deer, just not a lot of deer with antlers. I was fulfilling, uh, fulfilling orders here at the shop when he <laughs> called his mama. Yeah. And she's standing literally right next to me. And I hear her talking to Nate. And she goes, hey, Travis is here. You want to talk to him? Oh, okay. Well, bye. I was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good. Yeah, no. Tell him to get back to work. <laughs> so, fine. I'll just keep fulfilling these big orders. So, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of close it out here. But um, so, one night I went out to go get fuel because I was driving around a lot. Yeah. And I slept in the – I was exhausted. I got out there at like 1030 Walmart parking lot. <laughs> slept there and I actually I came home basically a day and a half early like yeah. I, I changed my flight because uh-huh. I was just missing my boy and I'm like I was struggling I, I don't know I don't feel bad about that like I really miss my my family I came yeah. home a couple of days early basically and then the last day I came out early and I actually went to a um a Utah football game which was totally, really? totally off script. It's smelling like you smelled coming out of the... I came back. I found this park in Salt Lake. And I was like, I drove by a big stadium. I'm like, what is that? Utah Stadium. Look, there's a game tonight. Bought no a freaking ticket way. And went and saw Utah play. It was pretty cool. No freaking way. That yeah. is pretty cool, actually. So, did they win? They did. They smoked Southern, uh, Southern Utah. Southern Utah. I've never heard Utah's of Utah. Utah is ranked like 12th in the nation right now. Yeah. <laughs> really good. Really good. And I'm team. guessing Southern Utah is nowhere Not. near a ranking. <laughs> yeah. So as as so to close this out, I think one of the biggest lessons, like the gear, like everything but the sleeping bag, really, and that tent. That, yeah, I was gonna say the tent. Normally, if I, if I if I didn't know about that tent, I probably would have took my marmot, and it would have been huge. But I probably would have probably would have been fine. I blame that tent. and I, I can blame- tell you do, but I don't know that it was just the tent's fault. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you. I think the 50-degree bag and the lighter clothes also played a, a role. Yeah. But I think the tent definitely screwed yeah, you in terms of us, in, t- in terms of you getting all wet. It's, I, I, I'm, I, don't, I don't see this at all. Like my, that trip, I don't see it at all as a failure. Like I got in there, I found deer. Yeah. And I really tried hard to make a stock. It just didn't work. I never really got any really, really good reps in though. I mean, I was just creeping around. Um, I could have shot some, some does, but nothing with antlers. It's just how it goes, I guess. Yeah. That's fair. Trip home was super smooth. The, uh, they didn't even check my bag after that. They didn't check the spotting scope on the flight home. Nice. Got in. Smooth sailing. Were you, did you, you didn't end up taking any showers? No. Did you ever get any looks going through the airport? Because, I mean, I know when I came out of the Smokies after a couple of weeks, it was like rank. You got two inches of stank on you. Yeah, yeah. I got a little, bit of, a little bit of that butter, you know? <laughs> I do. <laughs> yeah. No, I didn't, I didn't get any looks. Wow. That's impressive. People have more self-control than I would. I, I really enjoyed it. I want to go back and do it. Like it's one of those trips that you get. You gotta go with Wait, picked. same same parcel. You go back. Same I don't know. Parcel? I don't think that's the high. I, actually, I know. Like on Go Hunt, you can look at the success yeah. for archery season. Like that specific season, it's like five percent. Yeah. Like it's not a hunt that you. It's a it's a hunt that you go on for adventure and to get your nuts kicked in. That's really you what can't that get to the deer. Is what it sounds like. I could have. Well, it could with the right gear. I think I could have with the right gear. Yeah, but all the while you would have been getting farther from the truck. When you finally got him killed. I'm not worried about getting farther from the truck, but I, I, know, I but was hiking the, the meat back out. Though. I honestly would have had a lot of confidence if I had a partner. I really yeah, would that's have. that's fair. That's fair. But even if you get him killed, you're 15. Did I, did I mention the vehicle situation? What about it? Like from, I, I was on pins and needles the entire trip because I didn't want to blow a flat or get broken yeah. down. Like yeah. The road. you not have a spare? You had a spare tire, yeah? I mean, yeah, but, but I didn't have any, I didn't have any tools. I mean. I was, that was, look at this, look at this road. Yeah. Yep. 
Like the whole way. Yep. You were so stressed out about that. Heck yeah. And this is just, this is a pretty smooth spot. Like, yeah, yeah. If you look yeah. back there, like the whole road is just jagged. Yep. You're yeah. driving on trail. The whole way. Two hours like that. Yep. I'm just sitting there like listening to podcasts and glassing. Like, I, <laughs> I don't know how many does I could have killed. I really, I, tons of does. I saw does the entire 8,000, 9,000 feet. Just, uh-huh. there's deer everywhere. Yeah. On the roads, crossing me in the morning, like. But the bucks were up in high country and I yeah. knew it. And I talked to a couple of guys too. They were like, have you thought about going up to these areas? I'm like, I spent three days up there actually. Like I, I found some deer. I just, yeah, it just couldn't safely get to them. Get to them. Yeah. So yeah. props, props Fair. to people who, uh, that's, it's really like on my list now. I, I feel really good about doing the. You feel like you got some unfinished business. Yeah. That, but like the solo experience is totally different. Yeah. And what I wanted to tell you earlier was like, it was so challenging mentally, uh-huh. but I like day two without a phone. Like I come, like I, I noticed on day two, like I let loose Relax in a way a yeah, yeah. where I, I could meditate. And what I mean by that is if I had to explain it, you know, like, like for example, now in the shop, it's like, Oh, we got to do this. got to do that. Mm-hmm. Oh crap. The mail's coming. Oh, got to go to the mm-hmm. bathroom. Oh, Hey, someone's here to talk to you. Hey, that, you know what I mean? Yeah. You just bounce and bounce and bounce. Yep, 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 yep. So like out there day two, like I'm having a thought and it's like this contiguous long thought where you, yeah. you just can't have you, that anywhere your, else. Your brain can actually breathe. Which is super nice, but yeah, for sure. I think we're out of time. Sounds yeah. like it was worth it. Is this your cup? Yeah. Let's do a cheers to meal oh, deer. Yeah. To meal deer. Get up over there. Eh, to meal deer. You hear that little. Mm. <laughs> that's the cheers okay people um thanks for listening along we're about to get into the swing of things for whitetail season and i think the next couple of episodes are going to be about kind of what we're seeing on the trail cameras kind of like our quote unquote maybe hit list hit list or like yeah goals for the year that kind of stuff like laying out the intro um set the stage set the, i like that yeah, we're getting we're getting back to the groove of things. We've been out of the office for like a week and a half. It's been kind of crazy and hectic, and yeah. Okay, fellas, ladies, gentlemen, appreciate it. We'll catch you on the next one. See you.